With Pokemon turning their printers up to max, are modern cards not nearly as rare as vintage cards? And are crimped and misprint cards really worth collecting? Those are questions plus more from you guys that we're going to answer today on the Q&A. What's going on, Funhouse crew? Welcome back to the channel, TCG Funhouse, where we talk all things Pokemon TCG. I am Travis, here with my boy. Who are you, my friend? Who are you? Uh, I'm ASX from ASX TCG, back in the hot seat again, because you guys got some of the awesomest, the best, the bestest questions the there bestest. are in, in, in the Pokemon game. And I like answering It is true. Them. It is true, guys. We are back with another episode of Pokemon TCG Q&A, where you guys ask us questions that you want to know anything Pokemon related. It could be about the video games, could be about the trading cards. Uh, we had a pretty lengthy conversation last time about what snacks we should be eating while opening cards. Um, so whatever you yeah. guys want to know, we all know. The shut snack. your mouth. We're not starting this way. We're not starting <laughs> this episode this way, ASX. Uh, all right, Ooh, all right. Put your fork down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, right. um, yes, guys. If you want your question answered by ASX and myself of the Gym Leaders Podcast, please here on YouTube leave it down in the comment section below. We do get three or four questions every single week from the comment section, Instagram DMs, um, Twitter DMs, wherever you want to leave us and ask us, let us know. We gather up uh, really just a few of them. Some of them we get, you know, they slip through the net. Don't feel bad. Just try again. Just try again. Um, and if you're watching on audio platforms, please give us a five-star review and drop a follow and share the podcast and this Q&A with anybody that you know may enjoy it. But without further ado, let's dive right in to the very first question today. And this is coming from Green Mountain Pokemon over in the YouTube comment section. Thank you, Green Mountain, for your question. Um, and basically, he wants to know, with Pokemon mass printing... It's obvious that rare cards are going to be less rare because they're printing five times as many. What do you think that is going to have like an effect on, right? So it was kind of worded, kind of weird here. I tried to straighten it out, but basically he's saying, do the big hits feel less, um, you know, big because there's more of them printed? What are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, I mean, shoot. I, I I mean, I feel like the big hits still feel big to me, right? Um, you know, I I feel like I I totally understand where you're coming from, right? There's so many more cards being printed right now. Naturally, all the big hits, there's going to be a lot more printed of those. Um, but I also feel like there's a lot more people out there, um, you know, ripping packs and stuff like that, and I mean, and also keeping stuff sealed as well. And you know, when the stuff stays sealed. Those cards aren't coming out, you know, in into the secondary markets and stuff like that. So, you know, I feel like um, I, I kind of feel like they're doing a good job and it, it does feel like they're kind of switching things up a little bit with pull rates, kind of, you know, tweaking uh, that to make it, you know, as, as good as it can be. Right. As I guess as fair as it can be. Um, so I guess, yeah, I guess I kind of feel like, you know, it's. Uh, they're they there is is. You know what I'm trying to say? They're really, I guess, they are yes. rare. They're still and rare. I, I agree with you. I think you touched on it on the end there where you said the pull rates. Um, so even mm -hmm. though they're printing five times as much, I believe these big mm -hmm. hits are five times as rare, right? So if they're if they're upping the printers right. 5x, they're really upping the printers 5x on commons, uncommons, hollow rares, reverses, V cards, you know, that sort of a thing. The bulk Correct. The I, I'm not yeah. so sure that they are actually turning those printers up on the alternate arts, on the gold cards, um, because it's really about the same as it was before for me. So, like, when I would open up booster boxes, yeah. you know, you would get maybe one secret rare in every booster box if it was a good box. At times, you mm -hmm. wouldn't get anything, and that seems to be consistent. What they've done, yeah. in my opinion, is they've added 
all these different types of cards as well now that we have the trainer gallery, right? So, yes, they're mass printing mm-hmm. cards, but now they're mass printing trainer galleries. And, yeah, the trainer galleries are, for the most part, under a dollar, right? The regular Vs, yeah. for the most part, are under a dollar to where before your standard EX might be 3 to $4, right? Now the V card right. is 65 cents to 85 cents. So that is where the difference is for me. I think the mm-hmm. top tier, the top echelon cards are actually, in some cases, even more rare than they were back in the day. Because we've kind of talked about it before, yeah. where the pull rates on the base set right. Charizard were significantly higher. You had a much better chance at pulling a base set Charizard um, than you did, let's say, an yeah. Umbreon VMAX alternate art was the direct comparison that we had back then. Um, so, right. yes, I think the mid-level cards and the commons and uncommons we are 100% in like a junk wax era, right? So they talk about junk yeah. wax from like the early 90s for basketball and football cards to where like even like it was printed so much to the point to where like an Emmett Smith rookie card is still only worth like to this day like eight, nine bucks. You know, a Shaq rookie oh, wow. card is like $10 to this day. And you're like, Shaquille O'Neal, one of the best yeah, players wow. of all time. You would think that one of his rookie cards would be <laughs> right. significantly more rare. Yeah, no, there's 14 yeah. quadrillion of them out there. Um, and I find that the exact same for, you know, standard V cards, holographics. But, yeah. you know, the big, big slapper dappers, I, I think, are still going to be significantly more rare. So the, what, quote unquote, when your question, big hits, I think they still are yeah. big, big hits. So, um, yeah, I'd yeah like what's your, right what's, I- anything else on that one? Yeah, no, like like you said, I, I I think you you definitely explained it better than I was trying to explain it. Um, <laughs> where yeah, they're they're increasing the commons, the uncommons, but yeah, the the big hits, I feel like you know they're not necessarily turning that dial up quite as much as they are with all the even the V's as you yeah. mentioned. Um, so yeah, I feel like the rarity is still there on those big pulls, like you're talking about. Nice. Okay, so uh, next question here comes from Mimikyu Ray. Big shout out, Mimikyu Ray, official member of the Funhouse crew, and he hangs and bangs every single Friday night on the live streams. So, big shout out to you, Mimikyu Ray. Your question here, and uh, I'm going to take the reins on this here first, right? Because I'm going to be short with it, so you'll have it. He wants to know, are error cards, and then in quotes, he pro, uh, mis miscuts and crimped cards worth collecting? Um, and the reason why I kind of wanted to go first here is because this is a very divisive thing for me. And for me, myself, the answer is no. I do not care at all whatsoever about miscuts or crimp cards. They're kind of cool. If I pull it myself, sure, I'll, I'll put it in a top loader, right? Um, but like, do I think it should increase the value of the, on the market of the card? I think the answer is no. It's the same reason why, like, you know, getting an off centered card, like what's the difference between getting a card that's slightly off centered and you give it a bad grade and getting a card that's extraordinarily off centered and getting the error card in quotes, right? Like you would think that the error card would actually be worse. Like it's not even a card because if it's miscut enough, you technically can't play it in a TCG matchup, you know? So like it loses its competitive value in that, that aspect of it. And for me, it's not special. I I've had tons of crimped cards. I I, I think I have six or seven or eight crimped cards in my collection over here that I pulled myself. They're just sitting over there. They're, they're in penny sleeves. They're not even in top loaders. They're they're not even in anything special. Yeah. Like I just they are what they are. I don't think they should increase. I don't find it like it's not like a rare for me, you know? Because it's 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 a factory yeah. error. It's not like, oh my god, they forgot to print the rarity symbol. They forgot to print, you know, XYZ on it, or they wrote height, height, weight, weight, like the Bulbasaur. Um <laughs> those are error cards that I think are pretty cool and unique. Just a straight, like, factory quality error, a quality control error, should not increase yeah. the price of the card for me. And I believe I'm actually in the minority for that. What do you think? Yeah, I, I would say um, 
Yeah, a lot of from what I hear, a lot of people do consider it to increase the value. When it for me though, what it really comes down to is, you know, what's the Pokemon on the card, right? What is the card? Um, I got a uh really badly crimped Wimpod back here from Vivid Voltage that I could tell you is not gonna be worth any more than if it wasn't crimped. Um, but you know, if it were a crimped Charizard V Max or something like that. Uh, I could see that being something, you know, maybe worth a little bit more to the right person. Um, I don't think it's going to have, you know, the biggest market, you know, right? Um, not everybody's going to want that crimped Charizard, but it does make it unique in a way that, you know, not many other people, if anybody else, is going to have one quite like that. Now, I do agree with you on the, the like, the factory air versus like a printing air so something that's actually printed on the card versus like how they cut it um i do think that like printing airs are something that's much more collectible much more rare um of a thing to yeah. happen especially like nowadays it seems like but yeah when it comes to just something that's just like really miscut um like check my instagram out i just posted uh back on monday a uh, really really badly miscut uh, origin form dialga like do I really think that's going to increase the value of that card? Probably not, you know, um, but you get the right card for it and find the right person. You know, that, so that what, could be what would a, you a value have? increase. Like, let's say you had an opportunity to pull mm -hmm. the Charizard V alternate art from Brilliant Stars. Would you rather have one in pristine okay. condition that is at least at minimum oh. a PSA 9 and potentially could be a 10? Or do you want one that is just full on on top like if full crimp like the full crimp of the yeah. machine not that little itty bitty like oh my god it kind of skipped you know the top a little bit like the full crimp on top do you want a full crimp charizard v alternate art or are you more of give me that pristine gem mint 10 yeah i mean of course uh, you give me that gem mint 10 right uh for my first one at least you know if i happen to pull a second one and it's crimped <laughs> up like that i mean that would just be kind of cool um, but yeah, no, I, I do lean more on the side. Like I do want my stuff pristine, right? Like I'm paying money for this stuff. Like I expect it to be like, you know, decent. Um, so yeah, I, I really would, uh, you know, want the pristine. It's very, I, very I interesting though, because I mean, honestly, there probably is a halfway decent chance that if that crimp is severe enough and bad enough, it could potentially be worth more because like you said, you know, it, it's, there's going to be more gym mint tens out there than there are crimped cards like that. So, you know, there, there's, there's yeah. somebody out there, there's an oddity out there somewhere that wants that crimp card and may pay over gym mint 10 value. Right. And like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know what the card next to it is, but like, what about like one that'd be like cut in half, you know, to where it's like half, half yeah. Charizard V max and half, whatever the other card on the other side, so, you know, the other alternate art, maybe it's half Arceus, half Charizard, like, Okay, that would just be insane. Like that, that would be something that I would say. Like you want that in your collection. That's that would be super. It, neat. it would be cool. Um, but those are cool. I've seen those before, where it's kind of half and half. A yeah, little bit. for sure. Okay, so moving forward here, this question uh, over on YouTube comment section as well is from Pepe Rodriguez, um, and he says, "Why do you think Pokemon TCG Japan always has higher quality cards, hollows, reverses, ultra rares, rating cards, etc." Do you ever think that Pokemon International will ever have cards that are just as good? Floor's yours, ASX. I hope they do one day. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that's uh, the truth. Because I, I'll tell you, I opened my first Japanese booster box not that long ago and was very impressed by the quality of the cards um, and the quality of the material of the cards. It's way different um, than what we get here in English. Oh, you can tell, um, too, just by holding them. Oh, so... Oh my god, I got some oh, right yeah. here. Like like the the like cardstock that it's on is like so much smoother. Like get yourself a Japanese booster box or a couple packs, open up some packs, and you'll you guys will see if you haven't already. Like the quality is much higher above uh where than what we have in English here. Uh at least right now in the sword and chill there, it's been crazy. Um uh, you were saying what was it? Do we think they'll ever okay, so do you think that Pokemon International Company will ever um, get to that point here. Um, I think it's going to take a lot to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Um, from what I've heard, you know, the, the Japanese factories, you know, have always had a higher standard of, you know, what they're going to allow out of those yeah. factories. 
um, which I don't feel like is really the case here. Um, sometimes it feels like there really wasn't too much quality control on our English cards here. So I th- honestly think to get to where, you know, the Japanese cards are, it's really going to take probably the next era or two. Um, I would say to really get the factories to where they need to be, to have that mm-hmm. quality. Um, but then even saying that, I mean, you know, we're 26 years into this thing now and we're still seeing like crazy, you know, errors and, you know, just factory errors and, um, you know, just terrible quality on some of the cards. I opened up a whole booster box one time of vivid voltage that there was just whitening all over every single common and uncommon. Yeah. It was I terrible. And and like, like that. I don't feel like you. Yeah. It, yeah. It happened in fusion strike again. And I just feel like, you know, really don't see that uh in japanese uh booster boxes or I, dude, I think i think like just that, as like you know? a generality i think you know like like you know the japanese culture is just more strict on that sort of thing like you know i, I haven't been there myself yeah. but like it's it's one of my favorite cultures and it's my my dream destination and it, it just seems like in terms of you know, a lot of different things like their standards just seem to be a little bit higher on things um, than the rest of the world. And especially for like Pokemon international, which is, you know, it, they're not just printing cards for the U S they're printing cards for, and that's why, you know, hashtag international, I guess you would say. Um, but they're going yeah. all over the world for the most part, you know, English cards, uh, you know, I make the mistake sometimes when I'm talking if I'll, I'll say cards released in the U S or, or, you know, United States cards, like, and it's, it's not like, those are cards that go all over right. the world including the US. Yeah. So like I'm sure you can find the numbers somewhere, but I would really like to know um how many cards go through the international factories as opposed to the Japanese factories. It's probably yeah, that's like a good twice point. as much. You know, I with all the so. different countries yeah. that it touches and just the the larger population status of the United States and Canada and England and Australia and all these other places that get the Pokemon international cards, it's probably two, three times the amount. I, yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. Not something I really thought about before, but that does make so sense. So of course, you know, they, that they would be that. Much and, it, and, and if they're mm-hmm. printed in the U S which I think they are printed in the U S for Pokemon international, you know, it's, it's capitalism. Yeah. We need to print those things as cheap as possible, man. Come on. You know how we do it. Of course. You know how we do it <laughs> around here. Um, Oh yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I do I ever think that the American I did it again, the American quality. No, the English quality of the cards will ever equal uh, the Japanese. No, and the second reason is is because I yeah. think that um you know, with Pokémon being created in Japan and I've said this on one of the episodes of the podcast before, a lot of people don't think about it this way. We are the secondary market for Pokémon TCG. Yeah. We are not, you know, Pokemon was not invented in America or anywhere else that gets the international cards. We are technically like number two, like Japan is number one decisions that are made inside of the Pokemon um, anime and lore and, and training card game for the most part, they look at Japan first. How is this going to affect the, the story arcs in Japan and you know, the fan base in Japan before they look at how is this going to affect the fan base in America and all these other things, we're number two, and we're not used to be number two. <laughs> um, but we don't think about it that way, you know. We just think of what we have on our shelves yeah. and what's in front of our face. You know what I mean? Um, right. So I think that they do that on purpose. I think they want the Japanese cards to be what they want Pokemon TCG to be. And then we're kind of like the right. knockoff market here in the English releases, even though a lot of times the English cards carry more value. They don't care about the secondary yeah. value, the secondary market value. They care about how's the meta game going, you know, who, how, how's the tournaments yeah. doing like, you know, and how is it selling? Exactly. That's all it is. So, um, but I, I definitely think Japanese quality is much better. Um, I'm with ASX Buy yourself a Japanese booster box guys. Like, there's just something about it too. There's just something more nostalgic yeah. about getting the Japanese cards. It just feels different and it feels better in my opinion. Uh, it really does. Yeah. I'm right there. Uh, with it, you. it might be because yep. I go through 20 times the amount of English cards that might, you know, that might be one of the reasons, but there's just, they feel yeah. better in your hand 
and they feel they good when you're opening them. Like it's just it's yeah. even though like just something about Pokemon with Japanese letters on it feels phenomenal. Like a lot of my sealed collection that yeah. I have on display is Japanese product. Like I have English product yeah. over here too, but like they're on my shelves, like hanging on my walls, Japanese stuff, Japanese stuff, Japanese stuff on display because I just like the way the Japanese letters like represent Pokemon better. It just feels that way to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely, definitely adds the flair. I mean, that's, that's like you said, that's where it all starts. It's where it all comes from. So yeah, it, it adds that kind of, that kind of nostalgia type feel. Like you said, yeah, I like it. I agree. Um, I agree for sure. Um, and guys, remember if you want your questions answered by us here on the fun house, uh, I was gonna say fun house crew, but technically this is Jim leaders podcast like with you here, you know, like I am the fun, hey, it's the fun house. Yeah, crew. You, you can be a part of the fun house crew. You know, I'll let, I'll let you in. I'll let you in, even though you don't, you know, Thank you're, you're not you. an official you. member. Hashtag shame on you. Hey, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> Call no, you, you, here, you, you. You're a member for your time. You donate your time. I get you. I get you. I, I put my time, my effort. That's right. My That's hard right. work. Your thought processes, you know, process I, you know, you're burning out all the brain cells. You have those? On this gym leaders you podcast have those? thing. I don't have any more. Only a couple left. I've I'm lost telling mine. you, this thing is burning them out. <laughs> I've lost mine. That's why. That's why you like deep dish. Okay, I get it now. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. But yeah, guys, if you want your question answered by us, leave it down in the comment section below here on YouTube or hit us up on um, any of our social medias. Um, and if it's a good question, we will answer it. And we look at them every single time. We reply to them. A lot of times, if we don't answer them on the podcast, we will reply to them in the comment section as well. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, but if you're new to the channel here, drop a sub. Go check out ASX's channel. Link in description as well. Drop a sub over there. We post tons and tons of Pokemon-related content between uh, conversations, unboxings, investment-type videos, all kinds of stuff here, guys. So hopefully I see you on some of our other videos. Thank you so much, ASX. Is there anything else that you want to say before we get out of here? Just keep the questions coming, you guys. I know I say it all the time, but like these are some of my favorite episodes to do. Uh, just kind of, you know, allows us to kind of get into your heads and see like what you're thinking about as well. So I, I enjoy all the questions. Thank you guys so much. Yep, absolutely, guys. And I hope you all have a wonderful night.